Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kastler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another video that I think you might want to term an aircraft video just a little bit more than a ham radio video, but maybe of interest to both since it involves GPS and gyros and wires and electrical current and all of that sort of thing. When I bought the airplane that I have now, which is a RANS S6ES, um, it had an instrument in it, and this is the instrument right here. This is an artificial horizon, and it's supposed to have the blue up here at the top. Okay, and the green represents ground, or and the blue is the sky, and this is the horizon line in between. And then this right here is an indicator of the aircraft. It goes up or down. And then underneath it, you can sort of see a spot there where three numbers appear. And those are the heading, uh, actually the track, in magnetic degrees. And then this little thing right down here is a skid slip indicator. There, you can just see the ball going by there. Okay. Now, this instrument worked when I took my demo ride in the airplane. It worked just fine. So I bought the airplane and then went back uh, in a couple weeks to um, get some training on the airplane and then fly it back to Colorado. And this did not work. And I was not happy about that because I kind of want an artificial horizon. One of the biggest killers of uh, private pilots uh, who fly what's called VFR, visual flight rules, is they'll fly into a cloud, lose orientation, they don't know which way is up, and they end up coming out of the cloud and crashing. Uh, so I want an artificial horizon. This broke, and it's made, uh, let's see, it's an ADI flight instrument, uh, let's see, made by True Track Flight Systems in Springdale, Arkansas, and it was made about, oh, 13, 14 years ago, and was a common little thing that was used in experimental aircraft. Now, let me explain experimental aircraft. Experimental aircraft means an aircraft that is not certified to be a copy of a certified aircraft. So the FAA will certify the type, like Cessna 152. Okay, then Cessna can go out and produce a whole bunch of 152s, and you have a certificated aircraft, and you have to be very careful with it. You can't do any work on it yourself. It has to be done by a certified mechanic and everything like that. Well, experimental aircraft are for people who like to build the aircraft themselves. What they do is they buy a kit from a manufacturer and they have to put in at least 51 percent of the value of the final product uh, which yeah i think you can understand that could get a little fuzzy um putting the thing together now my airplane built by rans r-a-n-s in hayes kansas and is a six uh, s six es and um over a thousand of those kits were built uh, it was built in the 2007-2008 time frame. Um, you know, the company is still going strong. Now, because it was built by the owner, uh, it's not actually certified to be an exact copy of a type because it's not built by certified people. It's built by the uh, owner. So the FAA simply calls those experimental aircraft. And it's required that there is a place on the aircraft where a passenger enters where they can't miss the word experimental in letters about that big. So uh, I'll have to show you where those are in my airplane. It's experimental. Anyway, they can put in avionics into the aircraft that are not certified. Now, I'll give you an example. I replaced this with a Garmin G5. Now, there are two ways you can buy the Garmin G5. You can buy a G5, which is uh, artificial horizon plus a few other instruments put together in a package about a third this size, um, that uh, 
um, you can get two ways. You can get a certified or certificated G5 for $2,500. And you were thinking ham radio was expensive. Well, what's interesting is you can get a non-certified experimental G5 for half that, $1,200, $1,250. Now, I ended up spending another $250 on mounting brackets and things like that. There's a spare battery that goes into it, yada, yada, yada. But uh, for a great deal less money, I got the same thing, except it's uh, very, very clear in the instruction book for it here, it says G5 Electronic Flight Instruments Pilot Guide for non-certified aircraft. Okay, it's the same pilot's guide you'd get otherwise, but it's very clear, non-certified aircraft. Okay, and it's already mounted. A friend of mine and I went up and put that in the aircraft, and I'll do a video about it at some point. But back to this thing. Okay, since I took it out. Now the problem is that you can see if I hold it up like this uh, we're looking at the world at a 90 degree angle. I mean it should look more like that but it looks like this and it stays like that when it's powered and in the aircraft. And you can tell it's trying to work because if you tilt the aircraft the horizon which is at about a 45 degree angle when it's powered the horizon stays at a 45 degree angle despite what the aircraft does. Uh, and the uh, direction in here, the track. Now, this is not a compass direction. This is the, because airplanes can fly sideways in the wind. And so your compass direction points you over there, but you're actually tracking this way. This is running off a GPS, and so it has the true track in there, which actually is a lot more convenient to work with, to know what your true track is. And then it's got a skid slip indicator in here. And it's got a place for the pitot tube input and the static tube input to come in the back so that uh, uh, it can give you a warning if your speed goes down. Okay, so kind of weird. There's uh, nice stickers on here that say warranty void if seal is broken. There's two of them on there. Well, it's broken. The instrument is broken, so so much for the warranty. It expired years ago. This on the back is the only connection, and it is connected. Power will um, make the unit work, and also can uh, power some lights in there. And uh, there are some other things you can do with it to connect it to other things. In my aircraft, it was not. This is the, uh, let's see, pitot tube here and uh, static tube here. This right here is where you plug in the GPS antenna plugs in right there. Well, I took the time to take the thing apart. So, shall we take it apart? Here, we just took it apart. Okay, here's what we see inside. First of all, this board comes right out. Just like that. Now, it's held in place when you have the thing all buttoned up. And this is the GPS receiver. Now, if you compare that with the GPS receiver I have on my little clock over here, this is a whole lot bigger and uh, a whole lot older. Um, and then the other thing that this does is provide power down to this connector right here. Now, if we look at the main unit, we see some things that are interesting. First, three adjustments, and there are nothing in the instructions that indicate what those do. There are some servo controls here that move the artificial horizon and the airplane up and down, because this will give you pitch, this gives you direction. Uh, it'll only go to 45 degrees. Uh, that's right there um, on course 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 30 degrees. After that, it stops reading accurately. So there's a little arrow here. It says, that's the way to go if you've lost uh, your sense of uh, direction on the thing. Now, what's really fascinating about this, here's the little um, uh, pneumatic tubes right here. And this right here just brings up, this is the main connector brings power and stuff in. And uh, this right up here, 
these are gyros. They're solid state gyros. Now it's interesting to note, you may have seen gyroscopes before that are things that you spin. What's spinning in here is a beam of light. And the beam of light goes two different ways and they watch the interference pattern. Now if you turn that, the Doppler effect means that you'll start seeing interference on that pattern. And that's how ring laser gyros work. And uh, so this is the reference system by which you determine the attitude, meaning where the airplane's pointed, up, down, sideways, over to the side, spinning around, whatever. Um, and that's all. This was kind of state of the art back in the mid 2000s, 2005, 2006, something like that, and is what is inside one of these instruments. Now the thing is not designed to be open, not designed to be taken care of by, uh, but did you see that orange wire right there? When I opened this thing up, that wire was broken and open and I thought well I'll solder back on and see what happens well unfortunately they didn't fix it so I still have a broken instrument I am having trouble getting power to it because it wants power uh, on pins 1 and 9 uh, in the little uh, RS-232 connector a DB9. DB9 connector is a better way of expressing it. It's DB9. It wants power on pins 1 and 9. Well, I can't find... I don't have a spare female connector that I can wire the way I want. And I have uh, an RS-232. I'll show it to you. This cable right here, I think, is part of a null modem cable. And as it turns out, pin 9, none of the wires in here, because I got all the wires out, none of the wires go to pin 9. So I'll figure out, I'll have to get a connector, and then this can be a little office curiosity, just run it off the solar system. Aircraft run off 12 volts, like ham radio runs off 12 volts. And uh, so this plugs in here to this. Let's see if I can get that lined up. My hands are so shaky. There we go. Okay, and then that's the, the complete unit, and that goes back in the plastic box. Now, the new G5 is about a third as big as this. Uh, it's much smaller, and yet it has a full screen on the front uh, that gives, uh, it, it uses a screen, um, you know, like a computer screen to provide the information on it. I'll show you what the, um, this is uh, what it looks like on the G5. It gives you the artificial horizon. You see the blue and the brown. Also over here gives you your speed, your altitude, your track. Okay, and here's the little ball that's the slip uh, slide ball there and it tells you how what your pitch attitude is. It will also tell you true ground speed because it is after all GPS. And uh, it's a fascinating little thing. So I printed out the manual and had it uh, bound down at uh, uh, home, um, Office Depot. So there you go. I thought you'd just like to kind of see what's inside one of these uh, aircraft instruments. That the fact that they use these electronic ring laser gyrodes, gyros. Um, when I worked back in the 80s for Northrop Grumman, we were working on the inertial measurement unit for the MX missile. And uh, I actually got to see and hold one of the gyros that is uh, used in that uh, instrument. It was at the time the state of the art uh, for gyros, but they were mechanical gyros, still are I guess. Uh, the problem they were having with ring laser gyros was the fact that um, 
the beams, instead of slipping past each other, would actually lock phase. And they've solved that problem. I'm not sure how they've solved it. I should go look that up. But they have solved that problem. So now they can make extremely tiny gyroscopes for cell phones. <laughs> okay. Uh, this has a gyroscope in it so it knows if you've gone like this. We're like this. Okay. It's done with a gyroscope. That, that tells that. This also has a GPS receiver in it so that it knows exactly where you are on the map and be careful when you download apps to your phone that they aren't giving away your location because where you live, where you travel, where you visit and all that's valuable information to give away. So there you go. Another video. Um, I'll call it an airplane video, but I think I'll number it as an S day video just because it's kind of interesting. So I hope you're enjoying these uh, one video every day, trying to do something, uh, you know, either directly ham radio related or of interest to ham radio operators. And uh, uh, please check out decastlercom slash support for different ways that you can help support this, this channel, help fund this channel. And until we next meet, 73.